Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Inspirational Moments. I am Reverend Glendale Miller from the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. This program is designed to inspire, motivate, and encourage as you make a difference right where you are. I invite you in prayer. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, we praise thy holy name. With thanksgiving and adoration to your majesty, bless us, sustain us, as we further wait upon thee. Amen. I point you to Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter, and our focus is on verse number 31. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I want to talk this morning, God being our helper, from the subject, if God is for us. It's comforting, brothers and sisters, to know that someone got your back. It's comforting to know that someone is on our side. Paul, the apostle and author of our text, talks about God in this fashion. If God is for us, who can be against us? We serve a God who is on our side. He is our help. The opening theme song for this program is O oh God our help in ages past our hope for years to come our shelter from a stormy blast and our eternal home We are comforted by this word recorded in the 8th chapter of Romans. Paul then describes for us some things out of the goodness of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. 
and those he called he also justified. And those he justified he also glorified. All things, says Paul. Obviously, this can't mean tragic things. Paul can be talking about hardships, persecutions, disease, abuse, or a loved one's death. Surely he must mean all other things. God works for the good. No, no, brothers and sisters, Paul is saying all things, all things mean all things. How can God bring something good out of a disastrous situation? Paul gives the answer in what follows. God's purpose for us is that we would be conformed to the image of Jesus. But how can dealing with a tragic situation cause you and I to draw closer to Jesus. Paul answered that in chapter 5. In chapter 5 verses 3 and 4, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Part of the good God works out in us is developing our character, solidifying our hope and strengthening our perseverance. We don't like the idea that suffering produces these things in us, but we can accept it nonetheless. We look at the character Jesus had and how his hope was always in the Father and how he persevered through to the end. But how would we have seen these characteristics in Jesus if he had never dealt with suffering. We know how strong something is when it's tested. So when we get through the difficult things in our lives, we carry with us a testimony of strength, character, and hope for others to see. But it's also for us to see too. We think we have a certain level of faith and trust because when these are tested beyond what we considered our limitations to be. We see where we are really at. When we persevere, we come to the other side, amazed that we were able to get through it. We didn't know we had it in us. But we did because we are God's child and have been given the power of the Holy Spirit to do 
the amazing. Becoming more like Christ is a good thing. God works out. The testimony we have is a good thing. And the confidence we gain from it is a good thing that we take with us into the next hurdle we face. All things are not good, and not everything turns out good. But since God is for us, we will bring, he will bring something good out of everything for those who love him and desire his purpose to be accomplished. But there's more here. There's more here. Paul says, what then shall we say? in response to this, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but give him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously Give us all things. What shall we say in response to what? In response to knowing that God works for the good of those that love him and have been called by him, declared righteous by him, and declared positionally holy and pure through Christ by him. What shall we say in response to the God who has done all this for us? If God has redeemed us and set our feet on the solid rock, of Jesus, then what are we worried about? When Paul uses the word if here, he's not asking a question, he's stating a fact. Thus, it could say, since God is for us. If God went so far as to release his beloved son to our world so we would have the ability to be saved, then what more could be done to prove that he loved us? Abraham sacrificing Isaac, he was commanded to do. But God willingly give his son. Jesus willingly give his life. No one, he says, takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. John 10 and 18. And not only that, on top of the biggest thing God could ever do, on top of the greatest blessing God could ever give, eternal life, why would he think, why would we think he could withhold any other blessing, all of which would be lesser in comparison? All of what we learn about God doing for us should cause us to realize that the creator of the universe is there for 
you and for me. He takes time and effort to make and mold us into the image of his son. And when we understand what the whole, with, we understand that the all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God is for us, then every other grossly inferior power will be ineffective against us. The powers of evil are stronger than our natural selves. We are no match for Satan apart from Christ. But with Christ, with God being for our benefit, then no amount of evil can prevail against us unless we allow it to. Do you see the power behind that reality? Not that we say that arrogantly, but we can say that confidently. God's power, brothers and sisters, is part of the all things God so graciously gives to us. We might tend to think of this in a materialistic way, although the storehouse of God is limitless. The greater application of this is in how God will graciously give us spiritual blessings. God doesn't want to hold back on us. Part of him wanting to make us into the image of Jesus is so we'll be prepared to receive more. The more we partner with God in developing the character of Christ, the more spiritual bounty he will bestow because we will be more humble, mature, and wise to properly use what he gives us. If we are not humble or wise, we would act like the swine who trample the pearls. However, when we are seasoned, we will receive the blessings and responsibilities with respect and admiration. Things like discipline and teaching, and growing in wisdom and having discernment, being a good steward of our time and money, these spiritual gifts and abilities are the gracious things God wants to give to those who are prepared for them. God is the only one who can provide such gifts as wisdom, love, joy, insight, discernment. And these come with already having received the greatest gift of all, the salvation of our souls. Since God is for us, 
he will graciously give us all the great and wonderful things he has to offer. In verse number 33 and 34, it says, Who will bring any, who can bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Jesus, who died. More than that, who has raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding, glory to God, for us. We know who tries to bring a charge against us. It is Satan. He is called the accuser. He was in God's presence, accusing Job of being someone who would curse God if certain things happened to him. But that didn't happen. Zechariah had a vision where he saw Joshua standing in the Lord's presence with Satan, hurling accusations against him. The Lord rebuked him and defended Joshua. In Revelation 12, it says that Satan accuses the brothers night and day before God, but he was cast out and hurled down. Have you ever pictured Satan standing in the presence of God, hurling his accusations about you? Isn't he one of yours? Look what he just did. He doesn't love you. What does the accuser whisper in your ear? You're no good. God doesn't love you. You are not a real Christian. Whenever Satan spews that poison, we need to hear Jesus' voice drowning Satan and saying that you are his and he is ours. Telling us that I paid your debt in full. If God be for us, who can be against us? My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, says Paul, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That's why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, says Paul, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am made strong. Oh, if God be for us, who can be against us? I'm glad this morning 
to encourage your hearts. Let's draw a little closer. God is on our side. Oh God, our Father, we thank you this morning for the assurance of your word. Thank you. Thank you that if you are for us, you've not cast us away. You are for us. You never put us down. You are for us. Who can be against us? We thank you that when we thought that we were losing, you came and demonstrated that we are more than a conqueror. We praise you this morning for the victory we praise you this morning for overcoming power. We praise you this morning that you are on our side. Draw us now and we'll come running. Glory. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you've never made a confession of faith, you don't know him as Lord and Master, why not this beautiful morning invite him to draw you a little closer. Ask him to have right away with you. Listen to me. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. You can do it right this very moment. Salvation has come to your house. Well, if you wish to correspond with Reverend Glenn, his mailing address is G.E. Miller. 64 at hotmail.com or you can telephone him at 467 8939 we want to thank you so much for sharing with us on inspirational moments we'll talk again with you and share another word from God. In the meantime, may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be yours now and always. Have yourselves a great morning. God bless you.